Hi, and welcome to the final section. Till now, we have been using many packages created by package authors and contributors. In this section, we will learn how to create our own R package. Creating R packages is not known to be an easy process. This is because the CRAN team has put in place an excellent but elaborative system to create and maintain packages. Every package on CRAN goes through a protocol and must strictly adhere to the rules. This adds significant value to the R programming language because R ecosystem is well organized as a result. All packages have a uniform documentation system, common structure, working code examples, and optionally, vignettes. This makes it so convenient to become familiar with new packages and techniques in a short time. In this section, we will learn about making our packages in detail until it can be submitted on CRAN. In fact, we will create an R package from scratch, create the documentation, do the mandatory checks, and host it on GitHub. Finally, after completing all the checks and verifications, I will actually submit it on CRAN. Let's start the section by understanding the structure of an R package. In this video, we will understand the difference between a library and a package and see the contents of a typical R package. Before we understand the structure of an R package, let's understand what a library is. A library is any directory that contains one or more R packages. We can have more than one library, and we can see the existing libraries using lib paths. When we call the library function, R will look up the directories in lib paths. We can instruct R to look for packages from a new library like this. Nice! Let's now see the components of a typical R package. There are four mandatory components that go into any R package. The most significant one is the R directory, which contains all the R files. These R files, in turn, hold the functions provided by the package. There is an optional zzz.r file, which normally holds functions for package startup messages. Next is the description. This is the file that shows when we use help when calling a library function. We will go over the fields when we create the package in the next video. Next is the namespace. This file lists the functions exported by the package and those that it requires from other packages. The export and import from statements are used to make these declarations. Finally, there is the man folder, short for manuals. It contains the documentations in the form of .rd files that goes with the package. We will see how to create them in the upcoming video. In addition to the mandatory items, there are a few others that packages may have. For example, if you provide additional data sets, it can be placed as .rd data files in the data folder. Likewise, the Vignettes folder contains any PDF or RMD files used to make the package Vignettes, which provide additional documentation and examples for use in the package. The SRC folder, short for source, contains any C++ or C files used to generate compiled code. There could be other items, such as tests folder, that contains unit tests to make sure the package works the way it is supposed to. Finally, there is a license file. So those are the primary components of an R package. We will be creating several of these components in the next video. It could seem like hard work on the first look, but it isn't as hard as you think, because RStudio provides nice facilities to automate a large part of the setup. We will see this in more detail in the next video with an actual example.